in this world where everything seems to be going sideways. When you need things set straight, Zanna Coffee Straight Shot Espresso. Start your day with a bang. The best organic and GMO free coffee beans from around the world to amplify your senses and enhance love for life, liberty and the pursuit of happiness. Zanna Coffee brings you happiness in every cup. Fair trade, certified, sustainable, organic coffee. That means we do not use slaves. Free Zanna songs with every coffee bag. Find Zanna Coffee at www.zannacoffee.com www.zannacoffee.com Don't be cheap, you deserve the best. Get Zanna Coffee at www.zannacoffee.com here we go guys and girls, you're listening to Love, Guns and Freedom with Luca Zanna on K-Talks 1340 AM and on United States to the FM network. All right, this is the second part of first hour. You know, we've been following since the beginning uh, this situation between the federal government, the BLM, uh, against uh, these ranchers, especially we're talking about here in Nevada, the bandits, and not just the bandits as a family, but all the other Americans who went there to help, to support, and between them, I was also me. I mean, I was a member of the media, it's true, but I was there also with my heart as an American to witness this uh, abuse of power and this injustice, my opinion, what they were doing to these Americans, ranchers. And uh, among with me, there were other people that unfortunately they weren't so lucky. <laughs> They're still now rotting in jail, waiting for this trial that unfortunately doesn't seem to be so fair. For sure, it is not a speedy trial. I mean, they've been in jail almost two years, and that's sad. Their life ruined. I already had them on the show, at least their wives, and also themselves, directly from prison, waiting. And uh, it is a sad story. It's a travesty of justice, in my opinion. Regardless of what you believe or not, regardless of where you stand on this issue, the fact that, first of all, everybody deserves a speedy trial. And when you have nobody, it's a person, in this case, you know, we're talking about the next guest, the wife, we'll talk about her husband, and also other people that they're still in the same situation. Uh, they have no previous record. They're completely being, uh, let's say, perfect, let's say, um, American people, law-abiding people, working people. And they're rotting now and facing 20, 10 years, 20 years for a crime that there was not even a crime, at least there was not even a violent, there was no violence, there was nobody was hurt. And that's the scary thing. They get treated worse than probably if you are just a bank robber or if you are a child molester, much worse. So that's the sad story. But let's see what's exactly what's happening here. And I will bring already right now on the show, Andrea Parker. And uh, Andrea, are you there? Yes, I am. Andrea, hi. A uh, long time not talk to you, but I've been in touch with you. Last time we talked, you know, we we're talking about Eric, your husband, and uh, the trial that finally seems to come close. I, you know, my mind almost sometimes it gets overwhelmed and I need to wait when things really are defined and there is some sort of uh, update because otherwise always getting new updates halfway, I, I go crazy. I know there is now, finally, we have some updates. Uh, you went today, you were in court, right? Where you were today? Um, yes, I was down in Las Vegas at the Las Vegas Federal Courthouse for court today. And let's remember one second to remind, excuse me, to the listeners, exactly your husband uh, and also other fellow Americans like your husband. But in case, let's talk about Eric, exactly what he's facing, how many years in jail he's facing, for what type of charges? Um, he ha He is in a blanket indictment that has, I believe he's charged with 16 of the charges, they did drop one of the 924Cs that hold it, is it a 25 minimum year? Wow. And so it's gone from a hundred over 100 years to like 75 years is wow. what they're facing. If, wow. if convicted for all the charges. Seven years. Okay. Remember, let's remind, he was the guy that he was on the highway when the, uh, the BLM uh, troops, I want to call them, they were pretty much screaming orders to completely go back where we're coming from. I was there, so I pretty much remember the story, to disperse, and they were pointing loaded rifles at us. And they were saying, we're gonna shoot, or you disperse, or we'll shoot. That's the bottom line. And you, you saw your son, excuse me, you, you, your husband, with some other Americans, they were, they say, when they saw that they were pointing loaded guns at us, unarmed American, just because we were exercising our First Amendment, 
Uh, yes, the instinct was to say, don't do that. You cannot shoot at people because they're exercising the First Amendment. And the, I remember because I was there with him, at least I, wo I was down at, at, the, at, at the part of the, you know, that say, facing these federal troops uh, with my camera. At the same time, I remember your husband, he was there behind the, 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 the part of the highway, but he was even pointing the rifle at them. Mm -hmm. He was there in a ready position. That's his finger was off the trigger in a ready position. Somebody point a rifle at me. That's the minimum thing I can do, at least to take a stance of defense. He was even doing it for himself. He was doing it for us. So that's my little witnessing for whatever it's worth it. Now, tell me today the latest development or what happened in court. Who is the judge? Who is the, let's say, the prosecutor? What type of uh, tricks are they using? Are we allowed to have a constitution still in this uh, uh, federal court? What's going on? Okay. Um, first off, they have um, been previously telling us that we can't have the Constitution up in the courtroom. They went to as far as taking them out of our, our personal belongings and holding them downstairs and giving wow. them back to us when we're downstairs. You see. Since we've been pushing that out on social media, though, and getting it out there um, to everyone and they've been calling, they now allow us to bring them in the courtroom. Gee. But they make us turn them backwards so they can't, you know, like we'll have it in our shirt pockets or something and they have to be turned backwards now. So the Constitution is allowed in the courtroom, but only if it's turned backwards and we're not displaying it, as they're saying. Now, Eric um, has a Constitution that he wears in his front pocket all the time. And one day they actually had a marshal come over and take it out of his pocket because he was displaying it. And oh. lay it on the table. It's like a, like a weapon, and, um, like a weapon mass destruction. The Constitution. Wow. Exactly. Wow. Exactly. They don't want the jury to see the Constitution at all. Uh. And um, another day, he got a little upset with what the judge was doing, and he actually uh, picked it up off the desk because they allow him to still have it on on his table. Um, and so he picked it up and put it back into his pocket as a small bit of rebellion against her that day. Another one of the things that were um, coming out in, in court is they are now saying that anyone who had a long gun or a rifle um, attached on a sling on their body, if they ever touched that. Now, mind you, they were down in the wash. They were in this um, area where the terrain isn't, isn't flat. And if you had a slung weapon, it's, it's safety to hold that to your body so it's not bouncing around. Yeah. And they're saying pretty much anyone that had their hands on the weapon is then not just open carrying that weapon, but brandishing it, and it's against the law. Wow. So they're taking any picture of these people, and, and mind you, this was hours-long event, and they've got video, and they've got photos of everything, and if they have a part of a video, they can take a screenshot out of it, and if you're holding that weapon, you, have, you are now brandishing that weapon, and supposedly against the law. Wow. That's interesting. They're rewriting pretty much the laws too, by the way. So, but now, where are we? I mean, how close to the end of the trial are we? Well, that's another thing that we're dealing with. Um, the trial, w when we initially went into jury selection, the trial was supposed to be over around March 27th. They didn't think that it was going to go past that. And the government ha has had six weeks with two dark weeks. So that's And we only go Monday through Thursday. Every Friday is dark, so there's no court on Friday. And they took a week off in February and the week of the 27th off. So they've had two months with six weeks of um, their case. And we finally got into the prosecution or, or into the defense's case on April 3rd. And we've already had one dark day because a juror got sick. And they are rushing us through. Wow. They are telling us. They were able to bring all this conspiracy because, you know, one of the charges is conspiracy. And they were able to prove this conspiracy dating all the way back to February. They're bringing back things from February 2014 and, and all the way almost to current. But when we go for our defense, we can only talk about the actions on the day of the 12th. And that is because they do not want to see anything about Dave Bundy's arrest. Mm. where he was arrested by BLM officers and beat up along the side of the road for taking pictures. And I want to say it was at the 6th. And then on the 9th, when Margaret Houston was thrown to the ground, they have entered that video, but only 
from the point where Amund is tased or right before Amund is tased and after Margaret was thrown to the ground. And they won't let the part where Margaret's thrown to the ground in into evidence yet. Of course. I remember that. Yeah. I mean, are you kidding me? I mean, that's very emotional to show what type of violence they were using against uh, regular Americans. They were just there exercising the First Amendment. I'm sure there would be a devastating effect. Go ahead, please. Continue. Well, and that video is the reason that many of the people came it was all about the heavy-handedness of the BLM and what they were doing, that and the First Amendment zone areas. And um, so they, they don't want to talk about Margaret Houston. They're limiting us to only talk about what happened on the 12th. And then when we bring in witnesses that were there on the 12th, those witnesses um, are immediately... Um, at, you know, they talk to the prosecution and they say, well, this is still an open investigation and this witness needs to be provided a lawyer before they can even testify. So then the, the witness goes into the courtroom, is given a lawyer, they fill out their financial paperwork, they're given a lawyer, the lawyer is allowed to talk to them. I think one day we waited 40 minutes in the courtroom waiting for the lawyer to talk to the witness. And then the witness comes in and he was still going to testify then we spend another 10 minutes while the judge explains everything to the witness to make sure he still wants to testify. And he still wanted to testify at that moment, but at that time it was already by the end of the day, so he didn't go on right then. And by the next morning he had already decided and changed his mind. And this is what's going to happen to any witness we're, we're pulling in. First they're going to go to the prosecution and be like, is this witness, um, you know, on the list of the investigation, does he need a lawyer? And so it's pretty much intimidating the witnesses on taking the stand. They have cut our defense, so they've gotten six weeks to defend, and they're saying we should be doing closing arguments on Monday. And so far, we have had witnesses finally today. We have had, we got through three witnesses today. And that's all the defense has so far. I think we have another two witnesses, and then Eric Parker is going to take the stand. And that is all we've got right now. Well, I'm pretty scared because I tell you, man, uh, I don't know exactly what, what type of people they chose as a jury, but I'm sure they took the time to avoid to make the mistake that they did uh, in uh, Oregon the first time. Uh, mm -hmm. And I only, God knows, I hope in a miracle, but I can see what type of... Uh, uh, let's say trend they try to to impose here the fact even they don't want to allow to have the constitution the supreme law of the land they don't even want to have as a reminder that's scary i mean right there you can see where they're coming from you know we're under martial mm -hmm. law already there is no constitution the fact that your husband and other fellow americans they've been running almost two years right now without bail for how long remind me please one and a half years? Um, it's a little over, I want to say it's a year and two months now okay. that we're going on. I put it this way. One year it means life is destroyed. It means that, you know, it has no job. It means that probably you lost your home. It probably, you know, many things happen in your life that didn't have to happen. Because after all, they remind me about this. And the more important, I want to remind to the listeners, you know, regardless if you believe that these people have done something wrong or not, they are still innocent until proven guilty. Meanwhile, they spent more than one year in jail without even a chance to post bail. Well, if you commit a sex crime, if you are, a, you know, even a bank robber, I think they give you a chance to have a bail. Not for these people. That's insane. And uh, there are no previous criminal record. That's for me, that's the a really a terrible thing. You know, we're talking about a speedy trial. It's another, probably another half month, half, excuse me, half, half year before everything wraps up. Who only God knows. So what do you think? Has anything changed since the Trump administration took over, in your opinion? Or we have still the same prosecutor with the same attitude? Um, well, there's been a lot of things that have changed. Um, when Trump went and fired all of the uh, attorney generals, yeah. um, Daniel Bowden was in the courtroom every single day. And as soon as he was fired... He, Stephen Myrie, who is the main prosecutor on the team, then had to probably pick up some of Bowden's workload, and so he wasn't able to be as focused. So then we're left with Nadia Ahmed, uh, I don't know Dickerson's first name, and then who's the other person, do you know? Yeah. 
and Cregan. Okay. And they, I definitely have seen a change in their game. Like, they they are more confused, they're more rushed, they're making lots of mistakes. But they've had six weeks. So they can just sit up there and take all the time they want. And now that it's our time, the defense has started this Monday, and we're being rushed through, and the judge is, like, irritated with us. And we haven't even had a full week yet. In fact, we had one dark day in our week that we've had here because one of the jurors was sick. Wow. So it's pretty frustrating to be facing this. And, you know, we always believed, oh, we'll go into the courtroom and we'll we'll have a fair trial. Well, that is far from what we're getting here. What we're getting is basically tape over our mouths. You're not allowed to talk about this. You're not allowed to talk about that. Let's talk about Dan Love. They We didn't put Dan Love on our witness list because the prosecution did. Yeah. And this is all going through before he had the... Um, congressional investigation into him over the actions in Burning Man in 2015, where after the congressional investigation, he was, uh, he's accused of email scrubbing, witness tampering, um, telling the witnesses that it uh, is okay to say, I don't recall. And I don't recall is an accurate answer when you're being interrogated. And, um, What was it? Document shredding, witness tampering, and email scrubbing. Yeah. Um, And so he's being investigated for all this, and they won't call him. So we keep trying to call him like we should still be able to call him. Well, the judge, we can't call him because you cannot call a witness just to perjure him. Oh, my gosh. And we're arguing today it was brought up again, a compel... uh, A motion to compel Dan Love to take the stand because we need him to get certain... um, evidence in um there's a body cam video between him and pete Santilli that we need in and the judge will not let him take the stand and she rules with the prosecution every single time we barely get any of our objections even um over- sustained yeah and they get every single one that's so unfair <laughs> this is so unfair okay. i mean Seriously, I'm not even there, but I can see it. First of all, I'm not a lawyer, but I can see that in this case especially, Agent Dan Love is a very crucial part. He was there. He was the one giving the orders. I mean, he's not like just some bystander, by the way. And he was pretty much part of what the federal government was doing at the Bundys and directly also at us, you know, that we were just there protesting peacefully. So I cannot find believable, I mean, I believe you, don't get me wrong, but it's unbelievable to think that the judge just say so because she can do that. I mean, I know the jury cannot say anything right now, but I just pray this jury have a brain. That's all I can pray. What is your opinion? I mean, probably you can't read much, but what do you think about these 12 jurors that you have there? What type of people do you have? Are they working for you the know, federal government or, or they are regular people? Um, we have a good mix, I would say. We have a little bit of everyone. Um, but I can tell you that all the sneaky stuff that the government is doing, um, <clears throat> a lot of the rulings are made outside of the view of the jury. A lot of the arguments are made outside of the ears of the jury, but they're still seeing Like, for instance, um, they have Longbow Productions went around. This is an undercover FBI team that went around doing interviews with people. Yeah. And Eric and Scott Drexler both did interviews with them. Yeah. They played 18 clips of Eric's interview. Uh Didn't even last a half an hour. His entire interview was two hours. Wow. He also did an interview in when he was arrested in between transport because when they arrested him, they didn't take him right to our jail. They drove him two and a half hours to Boise jail. And in the car, they did an interview with him. They played one minute wow. of a two and a half hour long interview. Oh, they one edited, uh, probably, minute is what, all they played. They, they can cut and edit whatever they want. I can put a, a phrase out of contest, you know, just uh, what I need. I mean, that's insane. Also, so unethical because, you know, you have a Fifth Amendment and uh, if somebody is trying to, let's say, um, get information out of you, and in this situation was even call, telling them to, to, to your husband that they were working for the government, you know, they were just an interview. I mean, so it's so low. It's low at a new level, okay? I mean, seriously, they were trying to act like um, some sort of a documentary people, and then at that point, they were just trying to extort self-confessions. That, by the way, you know, at least I, I, I don't know... 
at this point what the people can think. But I was there. I met I met Eric. I was there. I saw what he did. And my opinion, Eric is probably one of the most law-abiding people I ever met. If it wasn't for him and people like him, probably I could even be there right now, or probably I could even be be back because we would have been shot, maybe. Now talking about a federal government and his best, uh, there was this gentleman. I want to call him gentleman that uh, was also, you know, I took a photo with him, by the way. And uh, Eric probably knew him too, because I remember we were talking uh, after all this ordeal. We were on the highway there. I forgot his name, but anyway, it's Burlinson, I guess. Greg Burlinson, if I remember. They found out that he's uh, an FBI informant. Are you familiar with him? Yes. What can you tell me about this uh, individual? So what happened in court with Burlison? So he's from Arizona. Yeah. And he was a paid FBI informant in 2013. Yeah. And he, they brought in a piece of evidence with this, um, I want to say Caputo was his name, an FBI agent Caputo. Yeah. And he's like the Arizona FBI agent. So he brings in Greg's um, Facebook and then, or no, a different agent brings, Nixon brings in Greg's Facebook and Caputo brings in this uh, phone call. Mm -hmm. And in this phone call between Greg and Caputo, he's talking about the Bundy Ranch and what guns he brings. And we're all kind of sitting in the room like, this is an awfully friendly call phone call to be having with the FBI. And he's talking about all these things. And then his lawyer gets up and asks the guy if he knew that Greg, or if he was Greg's handler and he was Greg's previously ha previous handler. He traded Greg off to Nixon who had already testified in court and no, and did not say anything about Greg being an informant wow. in 2013. Now it's kind of a gray area here because we can't really ask Caputo about anything pr after he passed him over to Nixon. So we don't know why they stopped having him as an FBI informant. If Greg knew that he <clears throat> was no longer an FBI informant, a lot of the questions they brought up is if they knew he had problems with alcohol and if the reason they stopped using him as an informant was because his information was um, not accurate. It was exaggerated. Yeah. Yes, not the truth, exaggerated so that he could get money. Yeah. Now that yeah. phone call sounded like he was trying to, you know, be like, hey, I've got information on the Bundy Ranch, you know, trying to get back into being an informant. Now, I'm not sure. We also did not hear the entirety of that phone call. And so everything still is up in the air uh, on what's going on there. And Greg is still in the courtroom being tried. So we're, we don't have all of the information, but we do know in 2013 he was a paid informant and that he made a phone call talking about the Bundy Ranch to this FBI agent. Wow. Now, he also did a longbow interview, and in his longbow interview, I mean, he's the only guy in all of these guys that said any of thing like um, what he posted on Facebook that he was one of the guys that was going to shoot the Metro guys, and after what they said, he wanted to burn their houses down with their wives and children inside them. Yeah. And in the longbow, he said that he's a pagan and he believes that he um, will always die in war. And he had went to the Bundy Ranch to die in the war and he really wished that the BLM would have fired a shot so that it could have been a war. And he um, brought a machete to chop people's heads off and take... <laughs> That's, uh, that's the typical speech, by the way. Sorry, if, yeah, this is exactly the speech of agent provocateur. You know, mostly the only exactly. people talk about violence and stupid things like that. They are people normally they are paid by the feds to create the crisis. You know, to create the drama. Uh, you know, it's sad. You know, I, I met the guy in person at the end of all the show. And by the way, I got video of him. He was holding the rifle, and you know, he was just there like everybody else. For what I see, he wasn't pointing the rifle either. But something smell about him. I didn't like his vibe. Then after, of course, we become friends on, on Facebook. And then he uh, allegedly, for what I remember, he was driving the car uh, in Phoenix area, I guess. And uh, stupid that he is, for what I understand, he pulled the gun on somebody because according to him, he felt threatened while he was driving. Anyway, he got charged. And I remember that uh, I think he had to plead guilty or something with that. So he's, he's a completely piece of art. This guy is a piece of work. My point is, uh, you know, uh, is he now rotting in jail with the other guys? Is he living in a separate room? 
or is among the regular population? Maybe this guy that is a rat, how is exactly, is he having a special room in jail or is just along with everybody else? Well, he is in a special room because he has some kind of medical issue. I'm yeah. not really sure what it is, but since he has gone into jail, I guess his vision was, he was having problems with his vision before he was arrested and now he is completely blind in jail. So he resides in the medical unit and the other guys are out into the population. Mm. So, but they still transport him at the same place. He was still privy to a lot of the joint um, meetings that they would have in Pahrump before the trial started. They've had all the guys in Pahrump and they would have big giant joint meetings with all the defendants and all of their lawyers. And he was involved in all of that. So that does raise issues all the way around. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 don't, I don't even know sometimes. I mean, maybe, it's, maybe you know, maybe little karma is back at him. You know, maybe that's why he's sick. I don't know. But maybe at the same time, maybe they give him a, the excuse of medical reason to keep him away from the general population. Normally, you know, rats, they're not exactly, exactly. welcome into, into prison with the regular people. But, you know, this is very sad, you know, to see fellow Americans um, for probably a few silver coins turning against each other, selling each other. The point, the point, you know, these people, they know very well. People like Burlinson know very well that the people at this band, this protest, they weren't criminal. They weren't doing anything bad. They were just being used uh, and they were trying to be manipulated to create some drama that I tell you, I'm amazed that people like Greg Burlinson didn't start to shoot in the middle of that point. Because when I was walking down to videotape the event and Greg Burlinson was behind me, this guy, I didn't like to have this guy behind me with his trigger, you know, with his finger that he was roaming around the trigger and it didn't seem even such a, a safe person, okay? So I said, God help us. So all we need is an idiot now, like him, and we really start World War III here. And listening to what he said, guess what? I mean, I think also these people, they get chosen by the feds because they also, they choose normally crazy idiots like him. They need people like him. This guy probably he really mm -hmm. believes half of the stuff he says. I wouldn't be surprised. So, anyway, what's next, uh, Andrea? What is the next stage? What is the next date that you need to, you, Eric, and other people need to face to, to end this night? Uh -huh. Well, we're going back into court tomorrow at 11. And um, we've got a couple more witnesses, and then Eric's going to take the stand. So, he should take the stand tomorrow or at the end of tomorrow and into Monday and then right into closing statements. Wow. There is a few other things I do want to bring up quickly. Go ahead, please. Um, some of, uh, you know, they're calling everyone co-conspirator statements. They're getting around the hearsay because you can't bring hearsay in as evidence in the courtroom, but they're getting around that by calling it co-conspirator statements. Yeah. And so anyone who posted anything on Facebook mm -hmm. um, to these guys, like if someone, let's, let's, talk Facebook here for a second. Yeah. If someone tags you on something on Facebook, you have no control over that. No. But they're using that as evidence against these guys in the courtroom. Somebody wow. tags them in something, they'll bring that up in, in the courtroom and say, well, you were tagged in this and you did not untag yourself. So that means that you, Are you had kidding to me? submit to this. Oh my if gosh. you liked another person's post, they're using that against you in court <laughs> as a co-conspirator. And then they're bringing in people's comments on your posts. And we all know that you post something and you've all got that weird, crazy friend that's going to post them something that you're like, oh my gosh, I can't even believe that person said that. Wow. And this they're using cute. that as evidence against you. They've called a bunch of people out as co-conspirators in court. I was even called out as a co-conspirator in, in the courtroom, as I said, in the, the gallery. Gee. For, uh, for commenting, hell yeah, on Stephen Stewart, who is one of the gentlemen that's on trial with Eric that traveled with him from Idaho. He's been a dear friend of ours for many, many years. After they said that they were safe and the cows came home and they were on their way back. And so they call me out in the courtroom as a co-conspirator. Oh, because they you said, you said, one second, let, 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 second, let, Andrea, what happened? Uh, let it sink again. You sell hell yeah because you agree on something uh, that was even that bad, and you are now a conspirator. This is like almost the time of the king. You know, you, you, you during the king, you say something against the king, you're gonna get punished. And it's, it's let people, people let this sink in. This is happening in America, okay? This is not like under the British crown. Pretty much could be the same. Uh, what did you say now? I was called also a conspirator myself. Did I call, did 
Call me. Yes, you were. Your name was mentioned in um, the oh courtroom. <laughs> I can't remember whose Facebook you commented on something, but you were called a co-conspirator in the courtroom as well. Wow, that's amazing. Should I wait for the uh, FBI to come to Marsha to come to pick me up anytime <laughs> soon, I guess? Should I get... Well, they t- did say that the... Um, investigation was still open great so i'm guessing that that might um deal with if they get a guilty or not guilty Wow. whether they're going to go after more or not That's... and this is the same thing that they're doing with the witnesses as the witnesses come in they're like oh well this could <clears throat> this is a co-conspirator he was in the wash with and if you were in the wash and had a weapon then you need a lawyer before you can even take the stand wow so just because and i was in the wash the facebook one second, one second. i was in the wash with my video camera and that would be enough to be a co-conspirator. I mean, I was doing my video yeah. re- camera reporter, like independent report. This is okay, Americans. I don't care now where are you. Uh, think about this. I w- am and now a law-abiding person, just because exercising my First Amendment, and more important also the, uh, the, the, the right of freedom of speech and freedom of press, without even, I was even armed. As I said many times, now I am a co-conspirator. I should be worried about my freedom. This is be- this is belong to I say probably to I don't know Nazi Germany I don't even think that probably like uh, some sort of uh, totalitarian country completely against his own people. It's amazing. So exactly. Well, I'm glad to hear that because you know as I said I expect always the worst and uh, I'm here you know I'm not even that concerned anymore. They can do whatever they want you know at this point they're gonna make it look worse and worse you know my life is is pretty much uh, in the hands of god uh wow this is very comforting really like that please continue okay so another thing that we learned um they brought up eric parker's facebook that's my husband and they were using the fact that he shared news articles Mm -hmm. now and when we say news articles you know if he shared one of your posts yeah or one of your um yeah that is used as evidence against against him and used as evidence in furthering the conspiracy. Wow. So if you follow any non-mainstream new, uh, media, any local little person that, that, like, say, if you're following my Facebook right now and yeah. I do updates with the court every single day, mm-hmm. and you share or like one of my videos, you are c- furthering the conspiracy. Gee. And you have now entered into the conspiracy. Even today, supposedly, this conspiracy that they've th- dreamed up is still going. Oh, my god! And so a lot of the things that they used against Eric was the articles that were coming out about the injustice that were happening at the Bundy Ranch. It's, it's mind-boggling to think. I mean, and we can take this away from the Bundy Ranch. Think about this. Let's look at the bigger picture. If you were to share a news article about some child having an adverse reaction to vaccines, mm-hmm. you are part of a conspiracy against the government. Wow. Let me give you a couple of likes. You know, one second, one second, one second. Be- Stay there. I'm on your Facebook page, Andrea Olson Parker. And now I'm going to give you a gazillion like. Screw you if you're listening, bastards. I really hate the <laughs> crap out of you. Okay, I don't give a crap. See, one like, one like on this. Beautiful. Looks like very conspiracy, this one. Another like. Okay. Uh, let me see. Another one. I love Eric Parker. Yes, like. Constitution, two likes. Here we go. This is double conspiracy. Wow. First Amendment area. Another like here. I'm loving it. Guys, don't you understand that you're listening? I don't care which spectrum of the political spectrum you are. This is against complete freedom. This is about try to silence us. If you are a lefty, a righty, I don't care, a center. This is about a tyrannical government try to freeze you in fear that you cannot even exercise your basic right of human being as an American. We're talking about freedom of speech, okay? Posting a like on somebody's Facebook could bring you into a conspiracy against the government. Is it really what's supposed to be in the land of the free, home of the brave? Wake up. So the only thing I can do is say, give you the middle finger. That's the point. Because it's millions of us. If you want to put us all in jail, go ahead. I'm sure you got enough tax dollar that you robbed from us the last few years. All right, continue, Andrea. I'm sorry, I'm getting kind of animated here. Please continue. Uh, well, you know, I know how you feel because I feel it in the courtroom every day. Some of the problems that we go through is as we're sitting in the courtroom, we can't have any emotions whatsoever. Mm-hmm. So I actually just take notes. I write everything, the whole, 
everything that happens in the courtroom down. And it helps me because if I'm writing it down, I have to keep going so fast. I can't have my emotions. Yeah. But I tell you, the things that are going on in that courtroom are just mind boggling. They actually, the government started to put memes in as evidence against them. Wow. Can you, I mean, like, let that sink in. Not only are we using Facebook, but memes. Have you ever shared a meme? Like, you share memes because they're outrageous, right? You don't share them because you're like, oh, this is, you know, you share them because they're so outrageous and over the top, and you think they're funny, and you share them. That's being used as evidence against. And they entered that. And the look on the jury's face as they were like, are we seriously looking at memes here? And they redacted that. So they entered two memes. And wow. then went ahead and redacted them and removed them from the evidence because of the way the jury responded to that. I never heard this in any type of case before that uh, uh, the prosecution is using, uh, uh, you know, just people comments and likes on Facebook for to become part of a conspiracy and eventually be used against you. I mean, this is really amazing. And, uh, you know, as I said, the, the probably is not over. You know, that's why I said I'm sure that uh, as a... You know, I'm not surprised. You know, I was there and I'm proud to be there and you had to kill me. I still tell you I was proud to be there and I'm proud to have met people like your husband and I'm proud that I have with my little camera to have reported this historical day to show this tyrannical act of government to point loaded guns on American people just because exercising the First Amendment. I don't care what you do to me. I know that you're listening to the show. I, heard, I, I have proofs that they be, according to the uh, IP address, I see different agencies listening to my, at least visiting my website. Guess what? I wish at least you give some donation here, buy some Zana coffee, you know, because you're really kind of cheap on top. You listen without paying here. But Andrea, what can I tell you? We are really living in interesting times. I don't know if Trump is gonna make any change. I hope so, at least some, at least some. I don't say everything, but something must be changed here because it's uh, to a level that it's uh, like a, a real tyrannical, way that people sometimes say is why you're complaining you know what just because it's not happening to you doesn't mean that it's not gonna happen to your son tomorrow you know you're gonna you're not gonna live the rest of your life hiding in your house thinking that you've done nothing wrong just because all we're trying to do here exercise our basic rights of americans that's the bottom line so i'm very sad i just pray for a miracle that's all i can say i want to give you the floor two more minutes whatever you want to say any way we can help Okay, well, we are going to be in court tomorrow from 11 until like 4 or 5. Um, we always need people to come down and, and sit in the courtroom and watch the injustice. That's the only way that we can keep the judge um, in some kind of restraint. Like the more people that are there, the, <clears throat> the harder it is for her to make the injustice go by <clears throat> unnoticed. Wow. Um, We've had letter campaigns to sessions. We're, we're still doing that. Um, we're up in the courtroom. We'll be there again on Monday. And um, you can always find me on my Facebook and get court updates that way. And just uh, pray for us because we're nearing the end. And what happens here, I, I don't think people quite understand that it's not just these six men on trial. What's on trial is our First Amendment and our Second Amendment, and it's very important. Yes, and yes. Um, it we're not getting any mainstream media coverage on this. Yeah, I hardly at all. The Las Vegas Review Journal has been doing some. It's been <clears throat> great. The uh, local ABC News came down and did something and put something on last night, but then they weren't there again today. Wow. Um, AP has been there every day, so mm. you know, look out those sources and and keep involved because as soon as we become complacent and non-involved that's when things start happening yeah listen i appreciate your help and your i pray for you and i tell you i pray for everybody at this point because you know i mean what do you think i may be the next one guys if you don't hear me anymore from the station on the air you know where i am probably i'm keeping company with eric and you know I, we need to win this is beyond eric and the other six people this is about the future of freedom the future of our rights if this government can get away with murder, murdering yeah. our rights, guess what? Next time would be your son. Next time could be yourself. So we got to really at least stand together in a peaceful way. Listen, Andrea, thank you very much. Uh, please don't go away. Let me finish this one. I'll stay one second with you. Okay, guys, this is the end. Uh, you're listening to Love, Guns, and Freedom. This is the first hour. We have two more exciting hours. Do not go away. Meanwhile, please, you understand, this is not just a show. I'm not here just to entertain. 
whenever, whenever I come on this microphone, I really mean it. This is, there is no money could pay what I'm trying to do here because freedom and what we, we are facing at risk. I mean, we're talking about jail. It's not that fun just because I go there to report the facts. The mainstream media may not give you. I may be part of this conspiracy, but I'm doing this one because I want to do it. And I'm not going to fault it. I'm not going to hide. At the same time, I need your help. It's a very small price to pay. All you can do, you know, even just 99 cents, go to www.zanna.us, download any of my songs, or go back and get some coffee, www.zannacoffee.com. Guess what? Lawyers may be expensive, so I better start to save some money. Seriously, I'm not even kidding here. Anyway, don't forget that we're here together and we better stand together, otherwise we will fail completely separately. That's really what's going to happen. And I really mean it, guys, please. Regardless of your political opinions, what is at risk here? It's freedom. It belongs to every American, to every human being. Do not go away. You're listening to Love, Guns, and Freedom. We look at Zanna, and you, you are on K Talks 1340 AM. And of course, also United States, the FM Network. Do not go away. Ready for our number two. You're listening to Love, Guns and Freedom with Lucas Zanna on United States.fm. 